So, hi everybody. <laughs> My name is Gus. I'm Gus Markle. I'm from Mexico. Uh, I'm from a small town. I'm going to share my screen and you're going to see it. Uh, this one. I'm from a town called Puebla, which is around an hour away from Mexico. Here you can see our country. We are a part of North America together with the US and Canada. And we also share another border with uh, Central America, which is Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And right in the middle of Mexico, you have here the town of Puebla. But I live in Mexico City. This is the capital of Mexico. Um, my city and, and the capital are separated by this massive volcanoes. So it's really nice. Uh, some clear mornings you can see the volcanoes from here. <laughs> and those uh, are separating the cities. So I met Eloisa through a group called Educreativas, which uh, was also at the Scratch Conference, I think, right, Eloisa? Yes. 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 And Professor Yolanda Campos was there, and I've been working with them since 2015, I think, uh, when we organized with them the Scratch Day. So... I'm going to tell you a little bit of, of, of what I've been doing uh, before I start talking about the micro bit, if you are okay with that. So, of course. yeah, I, um, I started off in this, I am an engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I studied in Germany. Well, when I was in Germany, I realized that a lot of what was happening inside of my uh, my school in, in, in the year in, I, I studied in Cologne in Germany uh, a lot of what was happening inside of the university wasn't really going outside and vice versa I was also uh, volunteering with Greenpeace uh, with the energy group we were uh, trying to pursue people to switch from a, from a, a regular uh, provider energy provider to a clean energy provider and um, I saw that what we were doing in Greenpeace and what I was doing at the university was totally disconnected. So I started this uh, blog that you see here, Re Regenerative, where I started to post. I, I took my friends from Greenpeace. It was 10 activists, environmental activists from Greenpeace. And I took them to the makerspace, to a makerspace in Cologne called Dingfabrik. And we started uh, doing different stuff. For example, here's a small video. We we took some bicycles, and we uh, took we we went to a uh, to a trash yard, and we created these bicycle generators. So we did this like uh, cinema. So my 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 goal was to uh, take engineers, sorry, take activists to work together with engineers. And we did this small festival. We were showing some some pictures here. You see one of the Greenpeace activists explaining the mechanisms and everything. So it was a really cool experience. And from that moment on, I decided that the homemaker movement was going to be my what I wanted to do. So when I came back to Mexico, uh, there were no maker spaces. That was 2012. So I started uh, uh, gathering people around this, uh, the, the, the country that were interested in that. And I came across uh, a friend, uh, Toño Quirarte, who was uh, the, the founder of this blog called Hacedores. Hacedores means makers in Spanish. So it was a way, our way of translating that. So with, with him, we, uh, I, I joined Hacedores and we started uh, was publishing about the maker movement. Um, we started publishing about ways of learning coding, like Scratch and so on. We started organizing events. And we started also um, building maker spaces. So um, I'm going to show you here some of the maker spaces we, we created. The first maker space we created was our own, Acedores Maker Space, which is somewhere here. This, if you see there, there's a small uh, scratch head. <laughs> That's from Vero, one of the educativas from, from Mexico. And what we did is we, we created this makerspace uh, just for us, because we said, look, what we've done and what we've seen in other countries uh, in makerspace is very cool. 
And we did this makerspace uh, downtown here in Mexico City. And our main goal was to create a makerspace. We didn't know that we we're going to um, get involved into education as deep as we did uh, five years later. But we created it for the community. And the, the cool part is that instead of having makers using the makerspace, we started having schools joining. A lot of schools started coming and said, hey, guys, like we want this in our school. So we started building uh, makerspaces at schools. Here's a picture of one of the first makerspaces we did. That's a, um, a Jewish school in Santa Fe here in Mexico City called uh, Colegio Hebreo Magen David. And they became the first school in Latin America to have a makerspace. And after that, we built more. This is a music school that also uh, that we design also their makerspace. Uh, it's very cool. They design instruments. So it's a music school that builds their own instruments. And here's another school here in Mexico City. And, and, and today we already made around 40 makerspaces. And after that, um, normally in Mexico, we don't have a very strong government so the people who start and who 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 found these first maker spaces were uh, private schools so at some point i started thinking well it's good that a lot of private schools have access to these spaces but what about the public sector what about communities um in mexico we have around 64 different cultures indigenous cultures that means also indigenous languages so um especially the southern region of mexico next to the border of guatemala the the states of chiapas uh, oaxaca they all have um, still um, Maya cultures, and they also speak their own language. So I partnered with a, an organization called Hakaranda Education, and with them we started doing different projects in indigenous communities. These pictures uh, you're seeing are from a project we did in Cuateca Altas. This is a Zapotec, uh, Zapotec town, a small village in Oaxaca City. Uh, sorry, in Oaxaca State. And we uh, went there and built a Raspberry Pi based uh, center. So it was a really cool experience. We, we, we received donations to, from monitors, mice, keyboard, and we teach the, the students how to build their own computer lab. The, the, the kids didn't have a, a computer lab in their, in their village, so we teach them how to do that. And well, if you see, it's all mix, uh, a mix of local materials with recycled materials. And of course, we, when they uh, set, set it up their computers, we start teaching them Scratch. We were uh, teaching there for two years. So we had teachers. We were going there every two months, but we had also local teachers teaching them. You see there, we were having a Sonic Pi class. We were teaching them coding with music. And... Um, well, that's a little bit of what Hakaranda does and what we've been doing for the last uh, three years, taking what we did in private schools to public schools, which is very different because of the, the challenge of getting the monies. Uh, here you see more maker spaces. And, um, and then, well, we started uh, using Microbit. Uh, the founder of Hakaranda, Michael Beckwith, he comes from the UK from the United Kingdom. So we had, well, he heard about Microbit through the, through the connection with the United Kingdom. And you know that Microbit, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundation from the BBC. Um, and they gave away the Microbits to more than, I think, 8 million uh, students in, in the United Kingdom. So, um, so yeah, we started using the Microbit through, through that connection. And since then, we've been doing a lot of uh, projects. The latest project that we did, um, let me go there. Well, maybe I I'm going to stop if you have um, any questions from this uh, first part of the presentation. You can ask me now. Was it hard to get donations for these public schools to get computers and stuff? Uh, normally, it was very funny uh, because normally you would ex expect that we 
the first time we did this computer project, it was like an open call. Like, hey guys, we work with this community. They don't have computer lab. Uh, if you can support us with a screen, an old screen, or a, or a mice and keyboard, I, w I would expect that, have expected that private schools or companies would come to us and give us stuff. But it was funny. It was the first people to bring us donations were other public schools in the city. So that was that was cool. That was cool to see the solidarity and the, and the, well, yeah, I, it was very nice. Uh, but but to get the donations, we also worked with major organizations like Save the Children like uh, United Way. So we work with these big organizations and those big organizations get money from big companies as donations and then they, they pass it to us. We are like the field organization. Like we, we execute the program in the field. So that, that model was interesting. We also been getting a lot of support from the, uh, the United States Embassy. Um, one of the cool or interesting things about the villages we work in is that they have a lot of uh, migrants. For example, in this community I show you, 70% of all the adults in summer are in the United States. Some of my students are what they call returnees. They, they went to the USA when they were, or they were born in the USA, but then they returned when they were 12. So imagine you have a 12-year-old who was raised and, and who grew up in California and now is living in an indigenous community in Oaxaca. So it's a very crazy, um, it's very interesting because they feel like they don't belong anywhere, right? But uh, luckily we, we had a lot of support from the American embassy. They were, they, they, they've been supporting a lot of, of all these technologies. So that's been a, a, a plus and, and a, a big help. So let me go. Um, we also had a. Sub, um, uh, I have uh, yeah. one question. Yeah. Uh, it's a huge work. You, you made it short, but I can imagine how difficult it was to develop and get all this stuff you have done. So, uh, <laughs> yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I would like to know, I, I'm not sure, when did you start it, when you came back to, to Mexico from Germany? Mm -hmm. um, what, when was it? How long, it, the, you know, uh, because you get together with Antonio Kirat mm -hmm. and you start uh, with him? Yeah, that was two, uh, 2000. I came back to Mexico 2012 and I started working with Acedores 2014. That was the year that we had the Oaxaca Maker Fair. That was the first Maker Fair in Mexico. So that, let's say that that event started the whole maker, uh, the maker movement. And, and, and that, that was what, six years ago. And six years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a lot of work for six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a little bit of the problem. We've been working and working, but we we haven't really had time to sit down and reflect a little bit on the things we've done. And that's also a little bit what we are, or at least I'm missing. Um, it's been a little bit hard to connect with, with the academy, for example. I've been trying to get academy uh, professors at universities to to join the maker movement, to come to the maker spaces and start doing studies. Because we are convinced of our maker education, we are convinced of our maker movement, but, and we have tons of maker spaces and blah, 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 but we don't have data to support it. And because we are working and doing projects day a day, it's hard for us to sit down and say, hey, look, I'm gonna do this assessment at this school. Um, we, we, for example, developed this um, uh, teacher training and we, we teach like 230 teachers it, that, that, uh, since we started, that was like three years ago. But again, we need, we need a little bit of support from, from, from outsiders that are not so absurd as we are in our work. So that's been, that's been a little bit of a, of a challenge to, to have someone, because when it, for example, all the literature researching the maker movement in the learning is from it's it's mainly american so uh, yes and, that's and, what i was it's totally 
another story. Yeah. So so every time we go to school and we are trying to do like more like more academically work, you go to the literature. Everything and and it's not it's there's nothing wrong with that. It's only the contexts are completely different. Like all my all my literature is based on 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 the experience of the USA, which has other challenges and other structures. So we are missing a little bit that about a little bit that um, that that support or or that connection with the uh, academy in Mexico to to really do this research. Yes, that was the second <laughs> question I would make it because uh, the challenge is to do something new in another other totally other context, mm -hmm. other government, other culture. Um, it's and difficult to other people to understand how difficult. Maybe people from the countries that are at the same level can yeah. imagine how difficult it is. <laughs> so yeah, yes. and and there's another challenge, and that's been occurring a lot this year. A lot of people today we have around 190, 200 school maker spaces in Mexico. That's a lot, but I don't see them working. Well, especially now, of course not, but, <laughs> but before of all this crisis, I, I, I haven't seen them collaborating. So one of my fears is that we created a monster. Everybody has a makerspace, but no one knows how to use it. Or for example, the 3D printing uh, uh, mania, right? Everybody bought a 3D printer but now it's standing there. It was very expensive and it's standing there and no one knows what to do. <laughs> so we also are uh, working a little bit on that. And that's why I like Microbit because I think Microbit, it's, it's not cheap, but with the price, you can do a lot. Like only with the board because it has a lot of sensors in it already. You can do a lot and there's a lot of material outside. Um, I'm going to show you, a, 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 or do you have any, another question? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you a, a video. I'm going to share my screen again. And, um, well, also we, we had, um, I don't know if, I think you have it also in your countries, in the, the British government. Oh, the the British government has a uh, sorry I was uh, hearing some voices. <laughs> um, the British government has um, like their cultural um, office in all the countries, which is called the British Council. In Latin America, we had this. Um, we also have the British Council, and they organized this event called the Girl Power Code Fest Americas. That was a, that was a hackathon with more than 250 girls in uh, Peru, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. And you see, their, uh, you see them there uh, working on their projects. The idea was to, to gather uh, girls, uh, secondary school girls, to work in projects that could solve uh, a, uh, one, or, or could help to achieve one of the, the sustainable development goals from the, from the UNO and sorry from the un and they were developing they had two two uh, previous classes where they where they got like the basic of micro bit and then they started developing their projects and th what you're seeing here is the mexico hackathon where they're working on their projects they're getting also help from 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 some specialists and at the same time girls in colombia peru and chile were doing the same and then at the end we all gather and presented projects and what type of projects were they doing? Well, for example, uh, maybe I can see them. That's where they are presenting. One group uh, did a, uh, it, it was, it was uh, like a memory game where you can program. It was a game to help people um, with Alzheimer's to exercise their memory. So they were trying to help people to exercise their memory, etc. Another another project was about fitness, for example. Um, you you with your micro bit, you can see like different exercises. It, it had also a step counter and and projects like like that. So this, for example, was a really cool experience. We got funding to to pay uh, the 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 girls. They were five groups of ten. It was 10 schools and all the 10 schools got micro bits 
to develop their projects. So uh, at the day of the hackathon, they only came to finish the projects. So they already developed some, some part of the code. And on the final day, they had like three hours to finish. They also had help from a specialist and, and they presented the, the project. So it was really cool to see what they could do with, with the micro bit. Um, we also have, and I mean, I can, I can share that with you. Uh, we have this website called Revolution. Um, a lot of years ago, in one of the critics uh, or the critics we always had with the Lego uh, kits and with the robotic uh, kits, is that for Mexico to get a Lego kit, uh, like a, um, 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 what's the name of it? I forgot. Bueno, to get like a Lego kit for robotics is very expensive. So we always had this idea of having like a program where where people uh, could learn using some some basic board and cardboard like they're gonna use microbit so we developed this program called revolution it's a free program um, it's in spanish but you can use translator to use it so all the all the curriculum is here is open and what we do is that we develop robots using cardboard here you see some you see some of the photos um Everything they do is based on microbit. They do they use a microbit in a small and a small expansion board called Kittenbot, which allows you to use motors. And they do their projects. Here they're doing some drawing machines. Um, and the idea is that everyone everyone that has a microbit and some cardboard lying around can use the this curriculum. Let me see. So there are principles of electronics, principles of, of, of robotics, and it was really interesting, this, this, this project. Uh, again, here the goal at the end was to develop something that could help communities. And let me see if I find the photos of the final projects. Here, for example, this group developed a small robot that resembles uh, Wally from the Disney movie, <laughs> and this one was like a, it was like an agriculture uh, robot. The idea was that this robot could uh, help to plant seeds and 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 and, and kill weeds. Um, another group developed like a whole bicycle system. Let me see if I see them here. Um, this this one was very cool. This this was like a challenge where they had to build a bridge. There's this organization organization called Engineers Without Borders, and they help mainly building bridges in in in, in communities where there there has been like a storm or or a flood, and they go to these communities and build bridges. So with that in mind, we created this bridge. So in this like challenge, like what how would you transport? Um, um, uh, medicine to one community to the other right so they had to build that and, and that was that was really interesting this is the bike I was telling you about like they did the small cardboard bike but the idea was to create like the whole system to make it more safe um, of course it was just a model as you can see there <laughs> and this is the group that created that this is the agricultural robot um, this group created a, uh, a, a like a like a sound cane for people for blind people. Um, you see it there. So it, it had like a like a distance sensor and it, and it worked. Um, the idea was to help blind people to navigate the world through sound to have like a radar. And everything is based on 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 microbit, and and that's the cool part. It's only cardboard and microbit. So. Uh, here in Mexico, we get the microbit for around thirty dollars. So it's like the thirty dollars and materials that you can get uh, easily out of the recycling. So that that was uh, very cool. And the last project I wanted to show you um, is a project we are working on now, which is called uh, Aquaforense, which is I mean the video is a little bit weird, but. Um, Aquaforense, it's a program that we developed to um, measure different water, uh, water uh, pollution indicators. We took the micro bit, uh, let me show you here, ah, here. 
So we took the micro bit and we created four different projects. Uh, one is measuring temperature of water. The other one is measuring the turbidity of the water. Uh, that means how much light is passing through the through the water. That's uh, an indicator for for uh, particles suspended in water. Um, then, for example, uh, this student is putting a small a small um, equipment uh, next to the waterfall to catch. It's actually it's called the baby legs. <laughs> it's an it's a small uh, trap to to capture uh, microplastics. So he's putting it next to the waterfall, and we were trying to find microplastics. We took for we we um, this is in a community called Tamasulapan, also in Oaxaca State. And we took four, four different locations uh, across a river, and we were measuring um, the pollution. We were also measuring the conductivity of water. Here you can see we're measuring conductivity of water to see if there were some salts or there were some, some, some things. Um, and everything here, here we're measuring the, 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 the turbidity of water, like how much light is passing through the water. So we were collecting samples. And uh, it was it was really cool. Um, here we're measuring the pH of water. Uh, this is one of the water sources. Um, very very nice. Here we were using a, a professional uh, measure um, uh, device because of course we wanted to compare what we were measuring with the micro bit and what we were measuring here. But um, I think well it was it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. And a little bit of the idea of this workshop was to show them that. <laughs> a little bit data is power, you know, like, yeah, it's important to learn code, but it's also important to know that coding and electronics uh, could be a, a tool for, for empowerment because um, in this region, there are uh, sometimes there have been problems of factories, especially uh, clothing factories that open the factory, especially, for example, jeans manufacturing, deming manufacturing. They come, they take the water of the river and they polluted it. So a little bit of my awareness or what I want them to be aware of is that they, they have to be, they have to be the, the guardians of their waters. And in order to do that, they need to know how to use these tools. So that was the, 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 the last uh, project I wanted to show you. And well, I don't know if you have any questions about that. Let me go back. Yeah, <laughs> so that was a little bit the, the that's the last break uh, we've done. We haven't had the the time to. Um, I would like to have it also up on 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 a website like Revolution, like the one I showed you. Uh, but it's been a little bit hard to to. I haven't really had time to to work on it. But I mean, those are some some examples of of the of the of the potential of of microbit. Um, a lot of people ask why not Arduino. Today Arduino you can get it for even for five dollars. It's very very cheap. But and I'm 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 gonna uh, quote uh, Mitchell Resnick here. Uh, Arduino has very very high floors. It's very hard to start. If I wanna turn on on and off an LED, it's gonna take me four hours to show you that. And we had an experience with a program called Meteorito, we were, we, 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 where we were doing uh, weather stations. But I realized that all the students were copying code. So um, that's why when I, when I got my first microbit, I was so in love with it because it, it uses Scratch. I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you the, the, the platform where you program. Um, it's very easy to use, and that's what I loved about Microbit, that that it had very very low, it had very very low uh, floors, so everybody could start. Um, so if you haven't if you haven't seen the the um, the, the 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 Make Code uh, platform. Uh, Microbit, as a, as a UK uh, foundation, they partner with a lot of really, really big organizations. For example, this, what you see here, was created by Microsoft. So it was a joint venture between Microsoft, ARM, who are the, pro the, the builders of the processor, uh, and I think also Samsung. I think Samsung is behind the whole hardware. So if you see here, well, 
you don't need a micro bit to start programming on micro bit. So for example, here, I'm going to put it in English. I, go, I can go to language. And the same thing I do on, on, on the scratch, just drag and drop blocks, and I can start, I can start programming very fast. So I'm going to have my loop. I'm going to have here forever. Forever, I'm going to show LEDs, and I'm going to show a smile. So I just do it like this. And here's my program. I just go here to play, and it's going to work here, right? But if I want to have it on my actual micro bit, I'm just going to go download, and I'm going to go here, and here, and I just go save. And you see here this LED flashing. It's um, writing the code inside of the micro bit. And now it's running. So it's a magic. <laughs> magic, exactly. That's that that's the hello world. That's the first program we do. And it's super easy. And look, that took us what? A minute. If I want to do that on Arduino, it's gonna take me a lot. So um even though microbit was thought for nine to thirteen years old, because it's so low floors and so high ceilings, but it's so low floors. I started, I, I use it with anyone. Because, um, again, sometimes if I take four hours to, to do this, of course, first of all, with Arduino, I will have to build with LEDs this matrix, this, this LED matrix that I already have here on my micro bit. So, uh, like, I think the effect that you can jump, start, in and jump and do that as fast as you can do that with micro bit is like, wow, people get very excited, and especially with teachers. I mean, some of my students, they already know Scratch or they grew up with Scratch. So when they are 10, 11, 12, they're like, hey, look, I need more. I need another challenge. So Arduino is fine for some of them. But with teachers that, especially teachers from from subjects that are not STEM related, they're like, why do you want me to code? But if they do this, at least they get this notion that they are they can grasp it faster. And also, I think the block thing, the Scratch let's say the, the the scratch heritage that is inside here it's very cool because it helps you to to really express your ideas and now that's the other cool thing about microbit the expression of ideas the part where you start doing your code and expressing in in computational thinking and applying it is faster so i think that's 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 one of the things i i i love about it and now we said it's very high uh, low floors Let's talk about the high ceilings. Well, the cool part of a micro bit is that it also started a whole uh, industry around it. So people said, okay, cool. I have my micro bit. I have my LEDs. I have buttons. I have a compass. I have a magnetometer. I have my processor. And I have some pins here. So I can work with that. That gives me time and that gives me enough electronics to work a whole semester. But what about going further? So this whole industry gathered around Microbit and started creating expansion boards. For example, this is a small robotic arm. You see, and it has a controller that is um, Microbit compatible. So I can just take my Microbit, hook it up here. And now, of course, I don't have the program now, but I can I can control my arm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the the image is not very good, so please put in the screen and wait a bit so we can see because it's not very good the image. I know. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yes, Sorry. because it's it's cutting. You know. Um, give me a sec. So just let me change the camera. Mm. Ah. Yeah, you can see me again, right? Now it's better. Yes. <laughs> yes, much better. <laughs> so this is this is a Thank robotics you. arm. Um this is just one of the many projects that people have created around the micro bit. So it's really cool and you can use it with joysticks. 
here here's the joysticks and and then you can program it so again using blocks using the same scratch blocks applied to electronics you can program build and program a robotic arm there's another kit this is the groove inventor kit this is also like twenty dollars and this one I'm using um, to to do actually I'm doing a, 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 I'm doing some videos on YouTube on this I can ex this is the expansion board so I can hook up um, groove sensors these sensors are also Arduino compatible but I have laser sensors I have ultrasonic sensors this is a, a, a distance measurement sensor with a <laughs> Playmobil <laughs> attached to it but again I put the micro bit here and I have four four um, four different um, um, connections and I can hook up up to I think 100 150 uh, different sensors so imagine um, if I can work already six months with a with a built-in sensors what I can do with the expansion boards so that's the cool thing if you learn scratch and then after scratch you jump into microbit with the same programming language and then you start using this uh, expansion boards well you have you have I think um, program and electronics to to work for for some 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 years and um, well, yeah, that I think that's it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, uh, we have experts on this <laughs> that can, ah, it's amazing. Others. Many ideas for your projects with the kids in Sweden. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, I, I saw your uh, kids was about 15, 16 years. I don't know. Uh, well, it depends. The kids I'm working with mm -hmm. uh, yes. in in the in revolution in the revolution program. Yes, we work with older with all their students. In the other programs, we normally work with students from uh, normally 12 to 16, 17 years. But I've used okay. microbit in, in, with all ages, honestly. Yes, <clears throat> I've, I've tried with, uh, I think they are 11 years, mm -hmm. 10, 10 years in a class and it works, like you said, it takes, it takes about five minutes to yeah. show them how it's working yeah. and then they're yeah. on it. Yeah, I, I think the the best thing is you you get the result directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait uh, compiling, uh, doing some other stuff. It, it's directly. You can see what you are doing on the uh, twenty five LEDs. So I think it's amazing, and I've tried uh, with the kids. Uh, I think 15, 16, no, 15 years. Uh, and we have some, some uh, projects with uh, automation in the class. They have built a, a little house. And then we have uh, a little bit uh, when the light goes down, there's a little bit LED that's turn, And it's very easy to do. Every, every kid understands it. So, but we, we tried uh, MicroPython with mm. it as well. Uh, I think it, it's it's the next level. I think exactly. Yeah. I, I, I don't like the JavaScript uh, uh, in the uh, editor. I like uh, Micro MicroPython instead. Mm -hmm. It's much better. I think. And what what, what do you use for MicroPython? Uh, Moo. Uh, uh, Moo. Yes, mm -hmm. Moo. Mm -hmm. Moo editor. Mm -hmm. Okay. For. For, I can uh, write it in the uh, where you can find it. Wait. Uh. Oh. Code with Mu. Are you, uh, yeah, uh, I see it here the, on the chat. Code with Mu. Code. Yeah, it's a very easy editor. Uh, you. you it's not fancy, 
beats <laughs> directly only the cold and uh, mm -hmm. a little bit so i think it's very good and and was it easy for your students to jump like from block to 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 like code okay we have we have students that don't care about anything <laughs> <Yeah. We, laughs> and we have students they they say okay i understand directly so but i, I it's only a small project so it's I, I wanted more time. I, I just came into the classroom for a small project and then get out. Yeah. <laughs> so I have no no continu continuous mm -hmm. uh, in the project. So, but I think uh, uh, the microbit is it's just wonderful. Yeah. So we are selling microbits now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that it's it's so easy uh, and it's so cheap. So, if you don't have a microbit, just buy a, a yeah. microbit. Yeah, and you can use also the the simulator. That's what I tell also. Uh, I'm doing every mm -hmm. Wednesday. Uh, there's a group on 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 Facebook called Microbit Latino America. So I'm doing a live, a Facebook live every every um, every Wednesday at eleven. Uh, Mexico time and um, yeah I, I tell people like don't be afraid of joining in everything I'm doing you can do it on the on the simulator you don't need to buy one like mm -hmm. you can start right off just using the, the simulator mm -hmm. and I think they, they started a project in in the uh, block editor uh, I think it's called classroom or something. Do, do you know about that? Yeah, I, I, I heard about it too, but I haven't really um, used it yet. But I think no. you can create like a classroom and have your students doing projects, something like that. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I'd be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add something to that. I've been using the micro bit with my kids and I do K through five. So, yeah. well, and my, this year I did it with my fourth graders. I don't have to do, basically how I introduce the micro bit is I just give them out in pairs. They work together in pairs and I've been putting them on the make code tutorials mm -hmm. and kind of let them work through it themselves. Yeah. But once we got through the make code tutorials, I've been kind of at a loss of what to go, where to go next with that. So that's what I'm really interested in hearing about, um, you know, what's the next step? You know, and we've done a little bit with the scratch too, because the scratch mm. and it's easier in the sense that you don't have to keep plugging the micro bit into your computer and then dragging the program down. And when you're dealing with fourth graders or third graders or fifth graders, sometimes that gets confusing for yeah. them. Yeah. So I like the idea that once I download the hex file on the micro bit, they don't ever have to download again. It just goes, they yeah. know that it just goes right over into their micro bit. Um, so we even I have one set of micro bits that have the scratch hex file on there so they use that with scratch and then I have another set that we use for make code and I like the make code because they can start by themselves initially but what I'm interested in next level so maybe somebody could address that I'll, I'll mute myself now <laughs> the, what what the age of your students um, I am elementary, so I've been doing it with, uh, well, fourth, fourth graders are about eight years old, eight, nine, ten. That's the age group I've been working with on the micro bits. Because there's also, I've been working with the Code Club, uh, which is like a project from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And I'm going to share with you on the, on the chat the link to the projects um the code club has like an open curricula that you can curriculum that you can use and they did a module for for microbit they have um, they have a module for scratch for uh, Py, uh, python for html raspberry pi and they did a small five like a five class curriculum for for the micro bit so maybe like that can add a little bit but well eh, now that i'm seeing the breaks they are similar to the breaks you find on the make code side but maybe the again the expansion boards are something to look at because um there's for example spark fun has a uh, expansion board to to create to uh, to use micro bit as a weather station 
and that's awesome because you can have like like a range go uh, gauge you can have like wind speed and you can measure that and you can do like really cool um, things around weather monitoring using the expansion and and it's not it's not that expensive so so i mean that's another another possibility to to jump to a uh, expansion board So for that age, I like to make challenges with my kids, uh, development challenges. Um, but you have to prepare, obviously, material for that. Like uh, I guess it's in Microsoft site. There is a, a ring for deaf people. You have to design a, a, a ring. How, to, how a deaf, the rings in, in our houses uses sounds. So how deaf people knows when someone is outside its house maybe they uh, ask for some pizza or some food and the guy is uh, outside but they don't have a ring how can they fix that and they use the radio um in the microbes to make some lights and they start making a lot of things there's a tutorial i i, I think it's in micro it, it's um, um make heroes it's a name i'm going to search for it and to put it in the in the chat Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you have, for example, this is SparkFone, part of the SparkFone, uh, ah, sorry, no, part of the SparkFone weather station. This is uh, for, to test uh, water, uh, like the, the one you make with nails to, to test uh, humidity. For example, this one, this small one is um, health. It measures um, heart rate and le oxygen level in blood oh. and you can plug it in the expansion board like this one uh you can use a laser cut for example like this one. nice like you can see <laughs> to make some cars that's cool <laughs> or uh, you can use legos let me see if you can see it this way uh, to make some this is a spider. I don't know if you're looking. Yeah. Okay. This is with Lego. Wow. And uh, a lot of cardboard and um, those, how do you say palitos de paleta? Uh, pop popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. I use a lot of popsicle sticks. <laughs> cool. uh, but uh, the main idea is that you have to make some challenge. You, you give them um, um, something like uh, a traffic sign for your school. How do you make some traffic signs, uh, automatic traffic signs, and they start working on it in, in pairs or with teams, and they have to design it. Uh, the next step is that they um, work with the idea. They have the challenge, and they make all the design of the project. I, for me, that is, that is the next step. step. Besides uh, the tutorials, they need to start working on the design of a project and then program and make some something with cardboard, popsicle sticks, or whatever they have uh, uh, at your school. So for me, that's the next step. That's great. How about the idea? I have old We Do kits, but, but they're the old ones, not the We Do too. So they come with some motors and things of that nature. And I'm just wondering, do I need an extension board to connect maybe the motors from a old we do kit or is there a way to do it without extension boards i don't know um, you can make without expansion you can use but it, it's very limited you just have uh, three pins mm -hmm. so there's few things you can connect with that you can use it but uh, there are very few pins yeah you can make. just control a motor right maybe 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 not the Lego we do. I think it's uh, too much, um, not current. Uh, ah, what you say? I think the the you have to have an extension board there. 
I think so. I've tried with the uh, older uh, RCX uh, Lego motors with an expansion board and it's working. Mm -hmm. I don't have it right now, but you can control uh, two motors. Uh, with external batteries, so things like this one, like a little car, uh, you can make them and control. With some uh, 360 servo motors, uh, I have made some some robots like that, and it works very fine with without expansion board. And D Daniel, if you can show the laser coated kit again, the oh. yes. That's like, the kit is like Meccano. It's like a Meccano type of board or, that's cool. Uh, it's MDF. Oh, uh, uh-huh. With nuts and bolts. And some 3D print parts like the, the angle for the motors. Oh. You should create a kit and sell it. <laughs> I would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, this is a back. Nice. And you're using the motor board from the, the expansion board? That's the kitten yes. bot. Ah, no, it's not the kitten bot. No, it's, an, no, it's another one. It's from D, DF and... Robot? Sorry? It's, it is from uh, DF Robot or? Uh, I don't know this one. Let me check. Yeah. That's cool. Yes, I, I guess it's a DF Robot. Uh -huh. um, it's in the battery. Nice. No. Jaboom. Okay. <laughs> ah, cool. Jaboom. Oh. It's Jaboom. It's like. It's upside down, I don't know why. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna show you the link. So if anybody, if anyone is interested, they can. Jaboom Super Bit Expansion Board for Microbit. That works. Yeah. yeah that works. I'm gonna share it here. I'm gonna share the link. But I prefer this one. Sparkle, the Gator Bit. Gator Bit. Yeah. <laughs> gonna share it too. Gator Bit. Yeah, so also, if anyone is interested, I mean, I'm going to leave also my contact data. They can send me an email. Um, if they want to develop something, I'll be uh, happy to share and to, to join in and, and help you develop curriculum or, 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 or an idea. Um, so I'm going to leave you my email here. So if you want, you can send me an email and we can play around with uh, the micro bit a little bit. Will you also share in the chat um, some of those websites that you were showing us earlier, particularly the one about the card, the cardboard one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, here in the cardboard one, the curriculum has it's it's um, it's to be done in twelve sessions of three hours, but they haven't uploaded. They they only have half of it online. So after the sixth session, it's all is uh, it's all like. It, 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 they're, they're still, they haven't uploaded, we haven't uploaded the, the content yet, but it, it should be there. And just use the Google Translator, uh, because it's in, in, in Spanish, but you just use uh, Google Translator. So I'm going to put it there. Yeah.
So I, I, I shared the Coke Club, uh, the Microbit curriculum from Coke Club and also well, the Revolution one. We develop also a weather station um, curriculum for... Uh, the, the, the project is called Meteorito and the idea is to create a weather station and upload the data to GLOVE, which is a NASA program. So um, the curriculum is also open, but all the projects are made for Arduino. We, al we already created the projects for Microbit, but we have to wait until we can share them on the website. But Meteorito.mx, uh, again, you can use the translator, and it's also every session, it's about a... Um, about a weather uh, variable. So the first one is temperature, and it goes like that. And um, you can use the, sim the, the, the examples to, to, teach, to teach it with the micro bit and the weather, the, the SparkFun weather bit, which is the, the expansion board for uh, the weather station. I'm gonna share that too, so. I think the part with uh, with uh, using a microbit with Scratch, I think it's very under not underappreciated. But I haven't seen a lot of projects, and I think you can do a lot of cool stuff. Like you can you can control your your programs on Scratch with a microbit. So we've done, for example, we did for an English class a um, it's like a car racing uh, program, and you you move the you steer the car with a microbit. You do like a cardboard uh, steering wheel, and then you steer the car, and you have to, instead of having obstacles coming towards you, you have words, uh, like um, um, like words with uh, spelling errors coming towards you. So if you crash a spelling error, you, you, you lose. But if you hit a, a word that is uh, spelled correctly, then you get points, you get like, you get gas. So there are a lot of cool things that I, I think you can do with a micro bit. One of the things that I'm missing, and I, I, I've told that to the people from the, the developers from Scratch, is to have to have the data. For example, I can measure temperature to, to, to be able to measure and have the temperature data in the microbit. Because if, if I have access to that, I could do really cool dashboards and start doing like, like measurements and, and more interesting stuff. But they haven't done that yet, that you can get data from the microbit to the to scratch there are ways of doing that but it's it's complicated so they, they it would be cool that they add those uh, blocks to to the scratch platform okay um does Anybody else has any questions or comments? Is that a good enough to, 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 to do now? Simon? Yeah, I'm fascinated in the weather station project and uh, the polluted water, the detection of the polluted water. I'm very interested in that project. Yeah. Yeah, I can share you the, the, the codes and everything. Um, if you want, just yeah. send me an email and I can um, share it with you. Did you cooperate with the local uh, water uh, protection department or no. uh, other administration? No. To do the project? No, no not, not yet. Um, uh, that's the thing. The idea is that we reach out to these uh, two organizations that are involved in that, but we haven't come to that stage. We're still trying to look for that contact. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 